Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! A row has begun within the Conservative Party over Boris Johnson's claim that the UK can keep its existing tariff arrangements with the European Union. Should there be a no-deal Brexit, that claim has been dismissed by the International Trade Secretary, Liam Fox, who in turn has been accused by senior, uh, senior Conservative Steve Baker of tilting at windmills. So can we make sense of this all? Uh, joining me are David Hennick, he's the UK Director at the European Centre for International Policy and Political Economy and a former trade, international trade negotiator. Also here, Marc Francois, the Conservative MP and Deputy Chair of the Eurosceptic European Research Group. Welcome to Morning. you both. Morning. OK, Mr Hennig, uh, Britain leaves the European Union on the 31st of October without a trade deal or deal of any kind, what happens to trade on November the 1st? No deal equals trade barriers, tariffs on UK goods going into the EU, technical barriers, inspections, loss of privileges to provide services across the EU. That all happens in the event of no deal. No deal is no deal. There's no mystery WTO provision that allows and you to get Do we know what that. level those tariffs would be? They vary. They can be 10%, for example, on cars. That's one often mentioned very high on agricultural produ produce of all sorts, meats, cereals, um, and that is the kind of, that's the trade that's most heavily affected, cars and farming produce. So, Mark Francois, uh, Boris Johnson's talking nonsense? No, he's not. Because when we leave the European Union, we take control of our own tariff schedules. So, if we wanted to, we could set our tariffs at zero, and there wouldn't be any tariffs on imports coming into the UK at all. That's correct, isn't it? That if we want, we, we can do good. what we want. I'm, I'm glad you agree. So we could, if we wanted to, set those tariffs at whatever level, and the WTO allows us to do that. Well, so there wouldn't necessarily have to be any tariffs on food or on cars or well, anything. Hang on, wait a minute. We're talking about two things. We're talking about where we set our tariffs. Yes. He was talking about what tariffs would be imposed on us, as I On us by the EU. And you'd accept that he's right on that, that there would be tariffs on cars, there would be uh, tariffs on agricultural produce. If they wanted to levy them, but it's actually not no, in their a law, isn't it? Yes, but it's not in their interest to do so. And well, remember, and no, well, let me explain. And remember, what we're ultimately after is a comprehensive free trade agreement. So, going to WTO terms, so-called no deal, is not the desired end state. It's a temporary status while you're trying to negotiate a comprehensive free trade agreement. So, to summarise, no deal is still better than a bad deal, but a trade deal is better than both. Well, okay, and the aim is the trade deal. All right. Just on that point, not in their interest to do so. Do they have a choice under WTO? Or? Well, first of all, under WTO. If there's no deal, no, there's no choice. They are going to put those tariffs, they put them on everybody. On the broader question, would they negotiate such a deal on day one? Is it in their interest? They have been firm that that is not in their interests at the moment. So unless moment. you think that they are being misleading um, and they are not telling us the truth, and I don't for a minute because when an international body like the EU says this is our red lines, they mean them because that has credibility with other negotiating partners as well, we have to take them at face value. Well, I'm not, I'm not accusing them of dishonesty. Don't misunderstand mm. my motives. But what I'm saying is, of course, they're going to play hardball. It's a negotiation. The difference is we'll actually have a Prime Minister in Boris Johnson who believes in standing up for his country. Theresa May was utterly compliant, offered them £39 billion for nothing, rolled over again and again. What will be different is we'll have a British Prime Minister who negotiates for Britain, not for the European Union. And what is, in that circumstance, which Mr Johnson says he's contemplating, what would he do about the tariffs we set? It would be the Prime Minister reporting to Parliament's decision. We could vary those tariffs if we yeah. wanted to. But there's also, hang on, there's another thing called tariff rate quotas, TRQs, which means you could decide uh, up to a point you don't levy tariffs on a certain percent, on a certain well, amount well, of goods. And that, no, no, hang on. But, but maybe you could just ask, answer yeah. my question. Well, I'm trying to, Adam. Well, you, <laughs> said, you said we could put our tariffs at zero. Is that the intention, to put our tariffs at zero? We'd, we would have the option. I'm not saying that it is, but the point is, because you leave, yeah, you take back control, to coin a phrase. We yeah, well, could, that... if we so chose. No, but exactly. But, but, you know, we're talking in practical terms here about something that might happen in a matter of months. Surely we should know 
what the next Prime Minister intends to do with tariffs. Would he set them at zero? Well, I suspect you need to ask Boris that. I'm not Boris. And I suspect that's one of the issues that well, will come out in the course of the debate. Would you advise him to set them at zero? Well, I think the fundamental thing is we'll have the power to do it and our trade expert well, agrees. Yeah, I know, but use the power. You know, come on, I'm giving you the power. Boris Johnson's won. We're leaving without a deal which you're happy to contemplate. What are you going to do? Well, what I'm saying is you have that option. But the thing, the thing to bear in mind is... What's the desired end state? Where do you want to end up? You want to end up with a comprehensive free trade agreement, which is what Tusk offered us 18 months right. ago, and the he, Prime Minister he turned didn't. it down. He offered it to Great Britain and not to the whole of the UK because of the Irish Well, then I, then I should say that the whole of the UK should offer it back to him. OK, okay now, just what about where we set our tariffs? What would We, we could set them at, di at zero. Would, would we do that? It's a very difficult decision because if we set them at zero, other countries will say, we don't need a trade agreement with you. A country, major countries like Canada or Japan, where we want them to reduce their tariffs to our produce, will say, well, we've got access to your market now. Why, why do we need to bother with this trade deal? You've set all of your tariffs at, uh, at, at zero. And, you know, we, that's one side of the story. Our importers, very important side of the story, our importers and consumers. But for our car producers, 120,000 people or so work manufacturing cars and automotive yeah. equipment. <laughs> they are going to be hit 70% of But the huge percentage of those, of, of that production, goes overseas. But the they are going to be hit by tariffs. Is, it would be our choice. Yes, I know, but, you Not know, if it's your choice to blow your head off, you don't take it very often. Uh, well, it was a, well, as a matter of fact, Alan, I'm not blowing my head off to date, nor indeed am I planning to. So. Right. No, but we're talking about what happens on November the 1st. But now, what about these TRQs you were telling us about? Yes, yeah, so, so tariff rate quotas, uh, what they mean is you can, as it were, set a quota for an amount of goods on which you don't levy any tariff at all, but you then levy a tariff on goods beyond that quote, a bit like a personal tax allowance, if you want to think of it like that. So one option would be to use tariff rate quotas to say we'll import a certain amount of something with no tariffs, but beyond that we'll apply right. some tariff. But all I'm saying is, well, no, hang on, you have all of these different options well, no, at your disposal. I, I just want to ask the expert here, can you do that? Yes, yes. no, yes. What, he, what he's saying, I mean, without, I think he's volunteering with, to be part of the negotiating team. With, without an agreement, these are things we do of our own. We can set what comes into our market. What we cannot set is what goes from our market into other markets, whether that's goods you've set, or services. You've said that what I've said is correct. So, so how I have accepted that. How would TRQs help? So TRQs may allow you to protect to a degree, for example, your domestic farming interests. They are almost always used in agricultural yeah. produce. So yeah. that essentially, you know, if, our, if the National Farmers Union say, look, if you import any more than this amount of beef, uh, beef farmers are going to go go bankrupt basically cannot compete these allow you to set to set that quota this yeah. stuff is not easy though this stuff is really tricky to put into uh, to put into place and like any negotiation and like the whole point with the whole eu well, negotiation well does it require negotiation or is it unilateral this stuff requires a, a, a negotiation at the WTO. It's a slightly different kind of negotiation because essentially you can yeah. assert what it is you want to do, yes. but other WTO members so do you have couldn't a say. Have it in place. Do have a say. It is oh. not completely and utterly unilateral. You couldn't have it in place on November 1st. You example. can put something in place, whether it's exactly these quotas, because we already have quotas, a share of them, that we're trying to disentangle from the EU's quotas. That negotiation yeah. has been going on now for a year. It has not reached any kind of conclusion because other countries say, well, we demand the level of access we've already got to your market, mm. so you can't restrict well, it. Well, what would be fundamentally different is we'd have a Prime Minister who really believed in standing up for us, who wouldn't, for instance, give the EU £39 billion for absolutely nothing in return. Any businessman would tell you that's a ludicrous way to negotiate, but that's what we did. So... The point with the negotiation, and I'm not going to go directly into the money, I'm going to go into the negotiation. It's about more than belief in Britain. We've had many war generals who had belief in, Brit b belief in their soldiers that didn't go terribly well because they didn't think about what it was that was actually going to deliver a result here. It's about more than belief. We need to be thinking, if we want to deal with the EU, what is it that the EU is looking to get? What is it that we are looking to get? I'm not sure we know the answer to either of those. I'm not sure we've heard the answer to we either do. of them from... We do. It's a comprehensive free trade agreement. That is not an end state. That is, that is an end state. That, no, it is not. That's that is a tool want. of trade. You say, OK, we want a free trade agreement. Free trade agreement does not even necessarily mean tariff-free trade. It might do. It may mean a reduction in tariffs. It does... It, we have not said so what it is the UK wants, and that is what we need to hear from your candidate, from the other candidate. Right. What is it that we want? OK, we are going to have to leave it there. Thank you both very much Thank indeed. You